Hi everyone, if you've just joined us, welcome. This is the last session of the uh, Oceans Reporting Workshop. Um, and it's nice to see that there are a lot of people already online ready to start. Um, I would just like to thank my colleague Epeli, who has uh, who did a stellar job last week taking over for me as I was recovering from the flu. Thanks, Epeli. Um, for those of you who've just joined us, I've put um, I've put a couple of uh, reminders, including the story grant call, which uh, which is currently open and closes at the end of April. So um, you know, Epeli would have sent you all a link this morning or earlier today. If you're on the other side of the world, he would have sent you a link to the story grant call. And if you, um, you know, have a story idea and you would like to apply for it, we, we encourage you not to wait for the deadline at the end of April uh, to please go ahead and, and submit your, your application, your story ideas. We have an exciting uh, last session today. So we look forward to the speakers. We're gonna start off with a, with a panel of speakers talking about um, challenges with uh, reporting in the Pacific um, on, on oceans uh, issues and, and how they cultivate those sources, how they get that information, who they contact. Um, but before I go into um, the first session today, I just want to say welcome everyone. Um, for those of you who've just joined us, I put the agenda, I've attached the, gen, the agenda uh, into the chat box. So you, you can look at it there or um, take a look at your email. I know Apelli has sent out the agenda as well as the reminder for today's um, Zoom link. Um, and uh, I think we have quite a number here already. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's time for us to start. Welcome once again. Uh, as I was saying, our first uh, session this morning is on cultivating sources in the Pacific. We have a panel from Samoa, Palau, and uh, and Shana, who's joining us from the UK, uh, the US. Sorry, from uh, San Diego. They'll be talking to us about uh, some of the best ways to make your contact list, to get your story information, and all in relation to oceans reporting. Um, so let me just uh, introduce our speakers. For today, they have uh, at least 10 minutes on the clock to, to talk to us a little bit about their work, a little bit about how they, you know, put their stories together, uh, what, what they look, who they look to and what they look at to get some of the data and information. Um, first up, we have uh, Nanette Bontun. Uh, Nanette is from SPREP, the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program. Uh, Nanette is the Communications and Outreach Media Advisor. She's also their Public Relations Officer for SPREP. Um, she is a media and communications expert that has been in the region forever and, you know, is, is great with anything on the environment. Of course, her work involves uh, oceans reporting, environmental reporting, anything from waste management to climate change. Uh, um, Nanette works uh, in this. She's been in this space for more than a decade. Um, and then we have uh, Leilani. Leilani is with the Palau Media Council. She is a businesswoman and a Palauan politician, but she was also uh, she's also the editor of um, and publisher of Palau's Island Times uh, newspaper. So they have uh, online and print uh, publications. Nanette will be uh, speaking to us about her work in Palau, and and as you know the. Uh, the Our Oceans Conference is in a couple of weeks time. It's actually in about two weeks time. So we'll hear from, from Nanette in Palau. And then we have Shana. Shana is the Director of Media and Communications uh, for the Waite Institute based in San Diego. Uh, Shana's background is in science communication she, uh, and visual media. So she's an expert in, in branding and in photography, videography, uh, media marketing, as well as uh, large scale communication initiatives. Um, so welcome panelists. It's lovely to have you here today to speak to us. I'm gonna um, open the floor to our first speaker, Nanette, uh, who's all the way in Samoa. Thank you, Nanette. Uh, kia ora na dona and kia ora na everybody. Um, so for those, I'm just going to put my camera on. Um, so, sorry. Uh, for those that haven't met me yet, my name is Nanette Winton. Um, I work in a... Hi, Nanette. Hi. Hi. 
Um, I work in our communications and outreach team at SPREP. Uh, SPREP is based in Samoa. I'm currently working out of the Cook Islands. Um, I came home and I left the Cook uh, Samoa in March 2020 at the start of the COVID uh, pandemic. And I finally made my way home um, in May uh, 2020. So I've been here all this time, um, just waiting out to see what happens before returning back. Um, so thank you very much. And lovely to see all your, all your beautiful names here today. Um, nice to see quite a few of you. Um, we've met before and we've worked before in the region. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you today is about um, Ocean's Work, and it's timely because uh, I just came out of a, we have a blue team at SPREP, and we just had our blue team meeting um, planning for some of the Ocean's events ahead. Um, Donna, is it okay if I, uh, can I share the screen? Um, I've got a PowerPoint presentation that I never actually got around to. Yes. Um, Sorry, and sorry, everybody, it's not fully complete, but it kind of gives you an idea of some of the work that we do um, at SPREP and that we have on at this time. Um, so let me just, okay. So how do I share a screen? Do I just click on my, sorry. All. Um, there should be a share screen button at the bottom. Video. Uh, I stop video. Oh, okay, it's here, eh? Um, video settings, maybe? Share screen. Okay. Um, cool. So please let me know if you get those on screen. Um, can you guys see this here? Or no? Uh, not yet. Did you want to send that to me um, as yeah, well? Yeah, I'll so send I can it to you maybe... now. And um, there were also some web links. I wanted to show some of our, um, uh, our website and our virtual library and where you can... Um... Sorry, I'm going to turn my screen off and I'll talk to you or while well, I'm just sending this. Um, so uh, the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, we have, if you haven't met us or heard of us before, we're an intergovernmental environment organization for the Pacific Islands region. Um, we work in four key areas, uh, that's waste, climate change, biodiversity, um, and our, um, environmental monitoring and governance and what that is is as you might already know it's um things like eias and so forth like that um it's that that type of work and we support we have uh 21 pacific island member countries and we work with them uh, and, and support them um to address their environmental concerns and build a sustainable environment um, so within that, we have a communications and environment, a communications and outreach unit, that's what I work for. And we do a really, really wide range um, of activities. Um, and one of the things that we do do is we work on our um, um, providing support for uh, Pacific Islands Media. Um, we do, uh, sorry, sorry, we have a spread media outreach uh, program in which we do a range of activities um, that includes both supporting the environmental specialists that we work with so that they feel confident to talk to you um, and then the other, uh, our media, and the other thing we aim to do is a Pacific media outreach in which we build uh, your capacity to report on Pacific Island environment issues. Um, our media outreach program has slowed somewhat over the past two slash, well, since COVID began. Um, uh, we understand that our media are very busy, so we've tried to find ways to work around this. Um, uh, what we do have, and I'll talk specifically, we do a lot of work um, uh, building capacity to work on the big areas that we work in. Uh, this is a big year, I think, for our oceans, as you know, uh, you may know um, Palau is hosting our ocean conference. Um, and then after that, was the, the UN Ocean Conference, um, oceans itself became formally recognized in the UNFCCC climate change negotiations with the um, oceans nexus. Uh, so we have a lot of things happening. And also, I really another, another big thing that's happened is 
um, there is going to be a new global agreement on uh, pollution, plastic pollution, um, and that's going to be underway this year as well, negotiating that. So while all these things are at this level, everything trickles down to what is, you know, um, at home. And I think that's where you might have done some training to understand the regional and global context and the impact upon the national context. Um, so what we do have is, oh, Donna, yeah, sorry, when you're ready, please do, yeah, please start. Now, are you gonna, I'm going to have to apologize, everybody. I haven't really finished this PowerPoint presentation. I have want to switch over and show you our, um, our website where you can get more information. Essentially, what I'm going to talk to you today is about, um, is on four key um, topic areas on cultivating sources in the Pacific. Um, and those four points are, you can um, uh, change on it. Those four points are, uh, what, what's your start, starting point? Because you can't just say I'm going to write about the ocean because, you know, there's so much within the social space that you can report on. So you need to have a starting point and know what's your issue. Uh, one thing that I find that helps me, and I don't know how you don't know what you don't, I don't know how it is that you know what you don't know, but it kind of helps if you know what you do know and what you don't know where, what you need to know from there, where you can go and who you can talk to. Um, and so if we can go to the next slide. I'm just going to talk a little bit about this whole, um, how huge our ocean issues are. So it's grouped into a whole lot of, if you want to know any facts or any information, we've got a whole lot of that. Um, and one of the, this is just an example of how vast the issue is. So if you're looking at saying, I'm going to write about climate change in oceans, there's so much to write about climate change in oceans. You've got ocean acidification, and this is one of the um, slides that we talked about on, um, on our social media campaign to raise awareness about ocean acidification. And even then, what you're doing on land is going to impact on our ocean when it comes to ocean acidification, as with other things. Can we have a next slide, um, please, Donna? Um, and if you're so, um, there's also our, health, our reefs, our coral reefs. There's always so many stories that you can do about, about our reefs, and they also link um, to ocean acidification. So this is another um, story area. Um, can we go to the next one, please, Donna? Um, and then we have so many other um, issues. So one of the things that we do with SPREP, as I mentioned, is we build the capacity of our Pacific Island delegates to amplify their Pacific voice, whether that be in any way with negotiators in the negotiations rooms or in other areas, whether you're making statements or speeches or talking to media and press conferences, we provide them with those resources. And this is where we can provide um, you with some information. These ones are specifically for them, but this is just to give you an example that you have climate change and tuna fisheries and understand that you'll be hearing from SBC and there was a whole study that's been done and now there was some real information there that you can work with about that. Uh, climate change and marine heat waves. Um, this is a whole nother ocean issue um, in which um, there's a lot of information the IPCC there and climate change and sea level rise. So these are some more issues um, in our ocean issues that you can talk to. Um, next slide, please. And that's just the ocean itself. Then there's some things across us regionally, like these little bits of facts. And we have something called, which you might want to take a, uh, make a note of, or I can send an email to Donna or put it in the chat after this, is we had a, a state of environment and conservation in the Pacific Islands 2020 regional report. Um, and we have an online report as well. And this is where you can find these headline facts like Pacific Islands govern 10% of the world's ocean in total and 20% of that is inside national um, economic zones. Um, and I'll send you the link to this. Is this is where you can find more information um, that can support some of your stories. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and then you're, again, you're looking at our marine species. Uh, and this is one way in which uh, whales um, are linked to climate change um, and how they uh, contribute to carbon sequestration um, and some of the things that they do. Um, the next slide, please. Um, and then here's another one where whales fertilize the ocean with their poo, increasing plankton growth, which sinks to the ocean floor, sequestering carbon. So there's 
if you if you want to stand on a right about climate change in the ocean, there's so much out there. You kind of got to pinpoint what it is specifically that you want to talk to um, about um, with your audience that will find this information helpful or interesting or what's news, um, and then build your base around that. Uh, next slide, please, Donna. And then this is one of the ones that I think is going to be a really, really big up and coming issue. Um, and this is, I think, um, the plastic pollution issue. Um, and now we're in the stage of preparing for a global um, agreement on plastics. Um, and one of the reasons why I think this is a big issue, because as you see here, the Pacific region contributes as little as 1.3% of global plastic pollution. Yet we're the ones that are going to be feeling the impacts, and we all know what our ocean means to us. So I think we've got some really big work on our hands as a small and developing state region as we move forward. Um, and and there, if no action is taken, the amount of plastics dumped into the ocean will triple by 2040 from 11 to 20 million tons a year. Um, so there's so much there. And I think all of it's really interesting. Um, and I guess one of the challenges for you guys is to know what specifically you want to write on about the ocean, or even better, if you write on it more often, that will be really good. Or if you put news on it um, um, quite a bit. Can we the next page, please? And then finally, just that slide before we talk to the next points, um, and that's to respect our ocean. Um, we as Pacific Islands people know the importance of our ocean. Um, one of the things that we need to do is build this understanding and awareness so that we continue caring for our ocean and keep holding true to these values um, um, that, you know, to keep a sustainable ocean. So that comes to the next point. Sorry. Um, what do you know? What, what don't you know? And I guess this might be a lot more easy for you if you could just, um, what might help is um, if I tend to kind of brainstorm what it is that I do know. Um, and then if that leads to any questions on what it is that I need to know, um, that, and that kind of builds my story and the gaps that I think that I might be having and where I can take it to from there. Um, sometimes there is a bit of a challenge because working in this job, even though I've been working here for over 10 years now, um, I'm always learning and there's always stuff that I didn't know. Just when I thought that I filled my quota of knowing all you need to know, there is more that you learn and you're constantly growing and constantly learning. And I think that's one thing you'll find when you do report on the ocean, that while you think you know enough, um, there is more out there that can um, lead you and take you, I guess, down a journalistic rabbit hole and keep you going. Um, can we go to the next slide? And so this is where I get a little bit messy. I was hoping to show you where we could go. Um, so where can you go? Uh, so SPREP has quite a few um, ocean, um, bits of ocean information. And we are currently in the process, as you see here, we've got this project. Um, it's the partnership, so a partnership on ocean certification. And we're rolling out a whole range of um, products at the moment. Um, one of them uh, is that we do have something called our Ocean Toolkit for Pacific Media. We currently have eight fact sheets in there that we grow over the years and we continue to grow. We're in the process now of updating all of those, adding some more and printing them and making them available and sending them out. Um, and then as we do, we'll just, when we get new ones, we'll add to those. Um, and these are some of the stories that we have, um, some of the fact sheets that we have in here. Um, and it's just little bits of information that you can know about the topic, um, and some prompts, some story ideas, um, glossaries and so forth, and um, just things that we think might help you. Um, we started this a few years ago, so we, like I said, we're going through and we're refining it um, and making it a little bit more targeted. And we also try not to put too much information, just enough for you so that you can see where to go to start and um, how you might be able to continue through. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, oh, sorry, and next slide after that, please. Um, so one of the other things that we're doing is we're developing this Pacific Conversation Series. 
Um, we said this uh, 2017 around the UN Ocean Conference in New York, and the whole of, my, of this is to provide you with just a little bit of information. Um, so you have some an informed starting point to work from when you have conversations. Um, we have a whole topic of these. Uh, we're working on printing these at the moment, and they're going to be little card size so we can add to them and people can use them. And it just provides you with some information points about ocean certification. We have a whole range of topics, um, and uh, we'll make these available. We also have our big Pacific Conversation series in which we put full page ads out uh, with the Islands Business Magazine, and that's where we provide you. And it's a very basic format three facts, um, three reasons why this is important for the Pacific, and three things that you can do. And they, we revolve these around um, environmental issues, including those of our ocean. Um, you can stop there, Donna, and I'll just talk to one last point, sorry, where you can go. Um, so if you're, sorry, this is where I wanted to show you our SPREP website. We have a really awesome virtual library on our website. Um, and Donna, you can stop the slide there and I'll just put the camera on. Um, so we have a really awesome website. It's www.sprep.org. If you go on the top right, you'll come across something called our resources, our publications, you click on that. You go on that and you go to virtual library. Anything you wanna know, you just type in. If you type ocean certification and all the stuff there on ocean certification will come up. You wanna know about Plastic pollution, you type that up and everything is there. And it's a really, really good go-to resource. Um, and what I'll do after this is I'll provide you with a list of links to other resources so you can get that pinpointed information. Um, the things that we do are pretty, um, we have a system that we try to do, use. It's an introduction, um, a little bit of an introduction to the issue. Um, we do um, why this is important to the Pacific. Um, we'll give you three facts or pieces of science or something to back it up. And then we always try to end with what it is that you can do because we believe that everybody owns our Pacific environment. Everybody has a role to play. Um, and so this is what we aim to do for most of our um, outreach and awareness content. So if you have any questions or anything, um, please let me know. Um, and when it comes to building your contact base, I guess it's like with anything, who you are able to build good relations with, who you can build trust with, um, that works. I would suggest people in your national um, government, like your marine resources, uh, fisheries, environment services, and then I'll show you about some national NGOs. Uh, we also have a lot of our regional NGOs and regional experts, both the, a number of our crop agencies like SPREP and SPC. Um, and uh, if there is anybody in particular that you would like to talk to within any of our organisations, um, you can just drop me a line and we can arrange that for you. Um, one of the things that we do notice about the request for information we get, it tends there is a trend that the type of um, media coverage that happens uh, revolves around whatever the international um, situations are. So during the conference that established the Pacific Pollution, um, the Pacific Pollution Convention, that's when we got a request wanting to know about um, uh, plastic waste. Of the, um, yeah, plastic waste and impacts on the Pacific and stuff. So we find that happens. Um, in advance, we do prepare some staff so they can be on hand to talk when needed. So if there is anything that you need somebody to talk with or some advice at the national level, please do drop me a line and I'll introduce you to the rest of our team and then we'll see how we can help you. Um, I think that is all from me. Does anybody have any questions or anything? So I can wrap up. Sorry for not doing my slide done in time. Um, it's a Sunday here. My hair came in early, many to finish it all. And then I got caught up in meetings and so forth. So it's Monday everywhere else in the world. So yeah, I look forward to seeing um, some of you over this year. Uh, also working with you a lot more. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Nan. Um, we, if you don't have any questions now, we have a little bit of time at the end of the session um, for at least one or two questions. So 
So if there are no questions now, um, I would like to invite Ms. Leilani Reklai to, to, to take the floor. Uh, Leilani, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, can hear, you hear you. Yep. Hi. All right. Hi, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all our friends and colleagues from uh, uh, the Pacific. Uh, uh, it's wonderful to be able to uh, join you all again on our third and last day, but it's very uh, informative and, uh, uh, you know, timely. Uh, webinar on oceans reporting. Um, I guess on behalf of myself and uh, uh, for those of us in Palau, I would, I would like to uh, say thank you to PINA and uh, Wade Institute, um, Internews for, um, excuse me, am I still connected? Uh-huh, yes, we can hear you. Sorry, all right. Um, my goodness, hold on just a second. My apologies. Uh, yeah, it's empty. Um, for you know, bringing this uh, very timely um, uh, uh, training for us, I I, you know, I have been, uh, um, when, we, when we heard that uh, the Oceans Conference was actually confirmed to, to, to happen about three months ago, um, I was kind of, uh, I realized that uh, we were not very well versed on the ocean, especially me. We have two veteran reporters in Palau that uh, have covered oceans for a uh, number of years. Uh, and so uh, I guess I was thinking that they will continue to do so, and they still do to some. Uh, uh, but I myself felt that I you know, really needed the training. And um, so, you know, when this opportunity came up, you know, we were just excited to sign on. Um, you know, I uh, I was talking to Lisa Williams a couple of weeks ago. Was you know was kind of reaching out for uh, more training and 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 I told her that look, I I feel so inadequate. I haven't really reported anything about the oceans. But it, our paper has carried stories. My other reporters have, have written about this, but myself, uh, you know, I feel like I have not uh, really reported on the ocean issues. Uh, and she said something that kind of, uh, you know, made me stop and think and said, you know, we, we are ocean people. We live in an ocean. Everything around us is about the ocean. And we, we report on these things, but sometimes we don't see um, these issues as uh, uh, ocean issues. And that kind of made me think about, you know, the stories that uh, I've written, uh, we've printed. And, um, you know, I start to realize that there's so many uh, stories about the oceans. Not every, not all of them are uh, about uh, you know tuna or about uh, IUU, but there's so many as well that um, around our communities that we have reported on, but we didn't think of them as ocean. Um, and we, you know, the first uh, uh, day of our webinar, we had a speaker, I believe, from Samoa. Uh, he's a reporter, and he also talked about. Um, you know how he heard, he read about the stories of his island and, and and some of the great dive sites around his village that all of these times he hadn't really written about it or mentioned to. And so that really got me thinking as well because I have been trying to reach out and I'm so glad you know uh, Annette one Annette one when it came up first because it just gave me uh, a fantastic source of. Uh, uh, you know, uh, to go to when I need data and information. But, um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I was a business person, that's really my background. But, but I, we've been involved in the news business in, since 2005. My experience, I've been a governor and I have been executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so sort of, uh, I've been a president of the Belong Tourism Association 
So with those experience, I realized that we have covered um, ocean stories. For example, from the tourism side, we have written about coral bleaching, the impact of climate change and coral bleaching and how that affects our, our key market, which is the uh, diving market. Uh, uh, diving market represents 70% of Palau's tourism. And, and so we have covered that extensively, the invasion of brown of thorns. Uh, uh, from the business side, we've talked about the, the fish, fishing companies uh, uh, leaving and, and, the, and, the, and the, the gap in the economy that they left uh, uh, as they, you know, as we implemented our Palau Marine Sanctuary, which banned the fishing in the 80% of, 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 of the EZ. So we, as the governor, I, I, I came in contact with um, unscrupulous uh, uh, investors and, and government officials that were uh, trying to start uh, um, sea cucumber um, receiving this, uh, assistance to the state governments. But what they were really doing were raping the reefs and taking every single sea cucumber in the reef um, and, and telling the people, this is really what we're doing is we're trying to help you. So we, have did, we did stories on those and, and uh, it gave our government uh, uh, opened our government's eyes to see what was really going on, and they put the moratorium on um, export of sea cucumbers so that they can uh, come up with better regulations and, and better uh, monitoring processes. So I, it was really kind of uh, uh, um, a really um, a good feeling to know that we're not alone and that it's happening across the region, and there are sources out there, not only expert sources from SPREP and in all other these agencies, but also um, from our colleagues. Um, since we became active member of PINA, we've had access to Pacific News, and we see similar stories of, uh, um, regarding oceans in, in different uh, countries in the Pacific that are similar to ours. Um, I'm setting myself up in here, but you know, it gives me a lot of ideas of stories that still uh, could be uh, uh, covered here. And stories that actually have a really um, uh, immediate impact on people's lives. Uh, our newspaper is, is very internally focused uh, for the most part, uh, it's directed toward our people. So uh, now just because we have, now we have an online uh, uh, news, we have a more international reach, but we are still very focused on our communities and and how we bring the information out to help them. So uh, sources for me now is not only being able to find regional sources and partners, but also looking at my colleagues like yourselves across the Pacific that deal with the same thing. Some of the stories actually, when you read them, all I could do is change the name of the place and the person, it pretty much resonates here as well, you know, because we are all in the oceans and we all have these issues. Um, we right now, we're about to host uh, the oceans, our Oceans Conference, uh, conference for 2022, but we are also faced with the um, uh, movement, the political movement, uh, uh, trying to change our Palau Marine National Marine Sanctuary, a very monumental legislation we feel for our country that took many years and, and entire community efforts to, to bring about. Now we're faced again with a, a proposition to, to, to flip that on its head, to, to turn 80% into open areas and with 70%, uh, 30% into the uh, sanctuary. Uh, for many of us, it feels like a step upward. And, um, but again, we need science and we need uh, sources to be able to say, okay, you know, are we, you know, just, is this just our feelings? We want to keep this or is there, you know, uh, a science that can back up uh, uh, some of these decisions or at least uh, some of the oppositions to the idea. So I was really looking forward to this uh, workshop because I was kind of looking for pointers and I, I have a whole notebook full of them. But uh, I think if I were to say um, any takeaways from, from, from this is that, uh, you know, all I had to do, all we had to do is reach out to our colleagues across the Pacific for sources and, and just 
you know, so happy with that. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, some people from PIF coming next week, this week, and uh, hopefully we'll be working with them to, to, to get contacts and, uh, uh, and, and to try to you know, develop those uh, relationships so that we have sources to go to. Uh, but I find that one of the key sources I can go to is to my colleagues, my news colleagues at those specific, because I see what they're putting out and uh, gives ideas of what we're doing here as well. Um, I think um, if one other thing that I, I was thinking about is the stories never go stale on the oceans, you know, they, they, they don't, they're not dated, you know. The, the event, uh, the issue may change, may, I mean, the time may change, but there's always something going on. Talking about uh, microplastics, uh, it's very much out there constantly, and we're still, I feel like we're just now starting to learn about it. Uh, there are, we have our own local uh, research institutions, um, and uh, so it's also good to be able to reach out uh, regionally and see how they're dealing with issues and, and be able to write the stories as well for our communities, uh, better understanding of our issues. So I, I don't know how long I have gone with the time, but I hope, you know, I don't have a presentation, but generally that's what I've seen in the last uh, uh, 20 some years of doing this. Uh, and, and in the few months that we start to talk about oceans, that's opening my eyes and saying we really are connected. We are, uh, our former president used to say, uh, oceans connect us, it does not separate us. And I think as uh, Pacific media, we are connected by that same ocean. And I'm very thankful for your support and, and, and assistance, uh, you know, getting us up to speed on the ocean reporting. So, Thank you so much for that. And if there's any questions, I would be um, more than happy to respond to. Thank you, Lenani. Um, thank you for that. We, we're going to um, move over to Shana from the WIT uh, team from WIT Institute now. Thanks, Shana. And if there are any questions, we can take them at the end of the session. Uh, we'll have uh, a little bit of time to take one or two questions. Thank you and hello everyone. I'm really excited to be here and really appreciate all of the talks that have come already and feel very honored to be a part of this. So thank you all for being here. Um, I'll keep mine pretty short. I know that we're on day three and we still have a lot of things to cover, but I just wanted to go through a little bit more about the Weight Institute. I'm the Director of Communications at the Weight Institute. And I really just wanted to say that I think our strength is really in the people that we work with. And that is our direct team, but also all of our extended network across the globe. And so what I think is most useful as a takeaway from this um, is for you to remember that we might be a good resource for connecting you to someone. So I want everyone here to feel completely inclined to reach out to me at any time. If you're looking for an expert uh, source, uh, if you want to learn more about a specific ocean issue, um, we have a pretty large extended network. Sorry, I thought my screen was playing. Um, one second, I'm trying to get to the next slide. Can everyone see my screen? I can. I have no problem. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought it was in presenter mode. You might need to close that little box, Shana. This one? Yeah. Thank you. Got it. There we go now. I'm clearly clicking the wrong thing. Sorry, everyone. There we go. Haven't done this in a minute. Okay, so back to what I was saying. We have a pretty large extended network of people that we're working with at the project sites that we focus on, but we also work in countries beyond this. Um, for example, we just ran an expedition in Palau to 
um, do an update on the status of the coral reefs and the fish populations there. So again, I really hope that um, you all feel empowered to reach out to me if you are looking for someone to talk to about an ocean issue. So like I was saying, you are more than welcome to reach out in the near future to request follow-up calls for deeper dives on specific ocean topics with our team. You can think of us as a resource. And I think as Tiffany mentioned in the call uh, last week, you can also think of us as a way to share your stories and um, we will repost them within our networks on social media and perhaps on our newsletter. So I'll put this link in the chat, um, but this is just a link to the deck of our team and where their expertise lies. So if you're ever looking for someone specific, you can click into this deck and see if there might be someone good for you to talk to. And then I just wanted to remind everyone, I know these things have been talked about a lot, but of just some key dates that are approaching quickly. So the Our Ocean Conference, which you'll be hearing about very soon is coming up uh, April 13th and 14th. So I will be there. And if anyone on this call would is going to be in Palau and would like to meet in person, I would really love that. Um, the story grants that Imelda and Donna have talked about are due April 30th. And then World Oceans Day is a good target for writing a first story, if that's something you're interested in. And then the UN Ocean Conference is coming up at the end of June in Lisbon. And that's really when we hope to shed a ton of light and get global focus on ocean issues. So I will leave you with my contacts. And again, I thank you for being here and for listening. Um, please feel free to reach out to me with anything that you need. Thank you. Thanks, Shana, uh, Lynette, and Leilani. Um, wow, that's our first session of the last workshop session, which went by really quickly. Um, are there any questions? You can put them in the chat, as my, my colleague Imelda has um, has just informed everyone as well. So if if you you know if you don't want to say it out loud, you're welcome to put in the chat and I'll be happy to read it for you or you're more than welcome to contact the speakers you just need to let myself or my colleague Epili who has been in touch with all of you um, if you would like to to be in touch with any of the speakers to interview them or you know clarify anything please you're more than welcome to, to contact us our emails um, are already with you so you know we'd be happy to, to facilitate any sort of interview or discussion you wish to have. Um, I know we're running a little bit over time, but do we have any questions uh, before we move on to our next session? Doesn't seem to, I think everyone is, is, is shy or tired. So I'm gonna move on because we have two other uh, busy people, but before we move on to the next session, once again, thank you, Shana. Thank you, Leilani and, and Annette. It was great having you um, on thank this you. First, last, first session of our last <laughs> workshop session. Thanks, um, everybody. And good luck to the media for covering our Ocean Conference. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, Nanette, are you going to be there providing any support? I know Lisa Williams from the no, Foreign Secretariat we will be there. Yeah, no, I will be there at that one. We um we just our current we have a new director general and he's just come on board, so everything kind of comes in at a, in between time. So uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye out and we need to be on a mailing list if there's anything we're really keen to on share content. Okay, okay. Well, there you have it. And uh, Annette is, you know, she'll be online providing support. Um, so if there's anything, you're more than welcome to contact her. But if you are attending, uh, Lisa Williams, who is with the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, she's their public relations advisor. She will be at the Our Oceans Conference in Palau. Um, and I believe we also have a team from the Wake Institute who will be there as well. But to talk to us today, all about the conference in Palau on April 13th and 14th, we have Mr. Alt 
Kirill Kazuo uh, from the Palau President's Office. And um, I'm, I'm going to introduce both of them. We also have uh, Mr. Justin Kenny from the US State Department. Um, o, who is, uh, who is um, he, he's mostly known as O. It serves as the media and communications lead for the Our Oceans Conference in Palau. He's a um, performance management specialist at the Palau Ministry of Finance. Um, and he was the former press secretary for the, um, the last president. So welcome, O. Um, we also have Justin, who's joining us from the US State Department. He's a senior advisor in the State Department on um, oceans, environment, and science. He has 25 years of experience in communications and conservation uh, from government, philanthropy, and advocacy. He serves in the Clinton and Obama administration and joining him today, um, joining O today, they will both talk to us about um, the Our Ocean Conference in Palau. So welcome, uh, welcome gentlemen, lovely having you uh, with us this afternoon or this evening if you're on the other side of the globe. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, everyone. It's really nice to see a, a, a familiar face and uh, a lot of familiar names. But thank you, Justin. Thanks for joining me on this. I know I was nervous all night <clears throat> um, seeing as to what will be presented in terms of our ocean and the conference, but it's down to the wire. Uh, the infrastructure, the content, commitments, speakers, it's down to the wire, even to the flight schedules. And um, a lot of stress, but Palau is doing its best in hosting this important conference, uh, our ocean uh, uh, conference in April 13th and 14th. Um, dub the our ocean, our people, our prosperity, that is our theme. And really as the first small island developing state to host this conference, uh, Palau is very proud to say, and I will highlight, highlight uh, an, an aspect of this conference that's new. Uh, with the little time we have that Palau will be uh, having an indigenous panel uh, as part of the, the six thematic areas. And this is really a way to represent uh, the Pacific Island nations and have that discussion um, in how traditional stewardship and modern day policy is now working. Uh, and maybe sort of uh, talk about the evolution of traditional practices such as the bull and merging these uh, uh, with the new science and modern day policies. But uh, uh, everything is in the works throughout the whole week. Please do check the website at uh, ourocean2022.pw. Uh, we'll be incorporate, incorporating a lot of what you need as far as information into the website this week. Um, and I'll take any questions and I'll, I'll leave it to uh, Mr. Kenny, Justin, uh, for the rest that we can join in this conversation together. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot, O. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss our our almost daily phone calls that we've been doing over the last many weeks playing for this thing at six in the morning my time, yes. seven at night your time. I've been, I've been talking been... to Justin more than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's there's that. I can actually leave in a few days um, for Palau, which I'm really looking forward to getting out there. It's going to be um, a great time. I thought I would just um, Justin Kenny with the State Department. Um, the United States is um, co-hosting the Our Ocean Conference with Palau, and I could talk just a little bit about um, a little bit of the history of the Our Ocean Conference, and if it's helpful to share my screen. How does that look? Does that work? Great. Um, yeah. Just a little bit about the Our Ocean Conference. This dates back to 2014. It was um, launched by uh, the United States and then Secretary of State John Kerry. Um, and there have been six Our Ocean Conferences um, since that time. I'm, kind of what makes the, the Our Ocean Conference a little different is it's really all about um, governments, NGOs, businesses, whomever, attendees, bringing commitments. Um, so there's not a negotiated tax, there's not a treaty or anything like that that's going on. This is all about bringing commitments for real action, um, whether it's new marine protected areas, launching um, new projects like Global Fishing Watch that was launched at an Our Ocean Conference, whether it's 
um, fund, you know, new funding for ocean conservation across any of the thematic areas. It's really all about driving those commitments. That's the hallmark of the, uh, the conference. Um, the attendees um, in Palau and in previous conferences, it, it tends to be at kind of at the high level, kind of a head of state ministerial levels, as well as, as leaders from within the ocean community. And then um, there are, um, the format across a couple of days is in kind of this like TED Talk style presentations um, with a real focus on um, people being able to make commitments from the stage or from the floor around the six thematic areas. And just uh, quickly to date, um, over the years, our Ocean Conference has um, generated more than 1,400 commitments, uh, valued at around more than $90 billion US. Um, and this is something that is tracked carefully and the progress of these commitments is tracked carefully. So if you, go, if you come and you say you're gonna do something, we're gonna make sure, we're gonna check and, and see if, that, if we make those commitments and we follow through on them. And you can see here the breakout of the commitments across the different thematic areas um, within the, our ocean conference. I'll skip the, the, um, the US part. Um, but really here, um, as O mentioned, this is um, happening uh, next week, um, amazingly, um, as an in-person conference or in, in on April 13th and 14th, in, in week and a half. Um, in-person conference in Kaur, uh, President Whips um, from Palau and, and Special Envoy Kerry from the U.S. are co-hosting. Um, and then, amazingly, Panama is set to host the next Our Ocean Conference in, in just about a year's time. Um, so it's going to be a busy um, stretch for sure for our oceans. So these are the six policy uh, areas of focus for Our Ocean Conference. So as you're thinking about uh, covering the Our Ocean Conference. You can come at this from many different ways or from at least six different ways. And, and O mentioned a, a particular focus on indigenous-led conservation as well. Uh, but climate and kind of the link between oceans and climate, this is super important in terms of, of kind of the ongoing uh, negotiations within the UN uh, Climate COP. Uh, but that ocean climate connection and really how do we look to the ocean as a place for solutions to the climate crisis. Um, areas of sustainable fisheries, looking at sustainable ocean economies, sustainable blue economies, marine protected areas, uh, maritime security, and, and marine pollution with a particular uh, emphasis on plastics, but really looking across the spectrum of ocean pollution. And within those cross-cutting themes, within those um, six themes, really this conference has two kind of cross-cutting themes. Again, that ocean climate connection. And then because Palau is hosting, and this is the first time that our ocean conference has been in a small island developing state, really looking at um, those islands issues, um, in particular around both how uh, climate and pollution and overfishing are impacting um, island communities, but also how islands are a real source of solutions and innovations and how do we bring those out and have those conversations. So that is my, um, I'll stop sharing, uh, but just a uh, background on the Our Ocean Conference. Again, if you are going to be there, I would love to meet you and, and see you there. If you are not able to attend in person, all the uh, plenary um, Panels will be broadcast live and then they'll be recorded and you can watch them later if you're not um, in the same time zone or if you just miss it, if you want to come back and watch it, you'll be able to do that as well. And I'll throw my email in the chat, but happy to take questions and oh, we'll see you um, in just a few days. A few days, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Uh, thank you, O and Justin. Do we have um, any questions on the floor? Um, I know we have a comment from Bernadette saying that uh, she's hoping that they get the names of the delegates coming to the conference. And Justin has sent us his email if you want to contact him directly. Yeah, I can certainly tell you the, um, I think if it's not up on the website now, it should be. We do, we are able to say uh, which country dele which countries are, con are sending delegations. So there's more than 80 countries participating in our Ocean Conference. 
Um, for security purposes, we're not able to say exactly who that is, unfortunately. Um, but we are able to um, say how many countries will be sending delegations to the R Ocean Conference. And again, it's, it's around 80. I think there are well over 100 um, non-governmental organizations participating as well. And also we'll be getting the site events list uh, today, tomorrow, pretty soon. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, I've just seen that. I've actually seen that um, you have the speakers already up as well. And I was wondering, will we have um, real time access? You did mention that you will have information um, on the website, but will this also be in real time so we can we can access and, and listen in? It will be. You'll be it'll be broadcast live, um, I believe, oh, through the State Department, U.S. State Department's YouTube channel. Um, is where they be broadcast live, and then we will um, have recordings of these. And that's yep. those are the sessions from the main stage, from the main plenary stage. There are other activities like the side events and things that are happening. Those won't be um, broadcast live, but the main plenary stage will all be broadcast live. Okay, and um, oh, because you'll be on the ground, do you mind sending us the link to that? Um, so we can share it with all the participants. We do have a question from Lide in Fiji asking about uh, how much of the events is online and, and that we can join via Zoom. And I think, Justin, you've just answered that. So if, if we could get a link to that, um, that would Absolutely. be fantastic. We'll, we'll share it yep. with everyone. Yeah. I know the agenda is also online, so we'll share the link and remind everyone that they can access the agenda on the site if they want to, to learn more or listen in. Um, and Bernadette is asking if there'll be a daily briefing and side events, if they, these will be online too. Um, the side events are not um, online as well, unless the, so there's 11 side events on the Wednesday and 11 more side events on the Thursday. And as Owen mentioned, those should be up on the website soon. It's up to the individual organizers to, to record those and share those and such. We were just not able to have the capacity to broadcast live across 11 different side events at one time. So just just um, just for everyone's information, the event on the main stage will be online and you can access that in real time. We will be sharing a link so um, you know you 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 can access that on their on their page. Um, and EG is asking, um, she says, you mentioned that you will be monitoring the commitment of countries. Have any of them um, have any of them not com not committed to their goals? So far. Sorry, I take myself off mute. Um, in at each of the our ocean conferences, um, the host country does um, take on kind of one of the pillars, you know, one of the six thematic areas or sometimes more and looks at kind of uh, reporting out on, on commitments and such. So there will be some um, information available around, um, I think on marine protected areas, O for sure, um, and maybe some others. So stay tuned for that. But we do, they, there is an opportunity for, um, for us to track previous commitments. Where are they in terms of their progress? Uh, commitments are done, commitments are still underway, commitments haven't started at all. So that, that information is available. Um, Bernadette is asking if there will be a representative from China. I do not believe China is attending, is one of the, is one of the um, country delegations, no. Not in person. Okay. Um, and Don, if I could say too, there was you know question? there was mention about the um, the Plastics Treaty, about the UN Ocean Conference. You know, this our Ocean Conference comes at really a remarkable time um, globally on oceans issues. There's just so much happening um, on fish subsidies, on international maritime organization, on deep seabed mining, on reef There's a lot going on. So um, I threw my my contact information in the in the chat there. I'm happy to stay in touch on our ocean conference, but on all the things that will be happening, it's really it really is a case where I feel like the the 
the decisions we take over these next couple of years are going to be um, really determining the fate of the oceans for a long time. So it's a pretty critical time. So happy to happy to do this tonight and happy to stay in touch. Absolutely. I know that the uh, conference has been delayed, I think, two years now. Um, and, you know, because we are connected by the ocean, I think this, you know, everyone in the Pacific will want to listen in and will want to know what's happening. But of course, I mean, I agree that there's a lot of issues, uh, you know, ocean acidification, the plastics issue, uh, including microplastics, that's, um, that is being talked about now. So, and, and overfishing, you know, um, illegal fishing, unregulated fishing. So it, it's coming at a really, really good time. Um, we have a question for Mary in Fiji, she's asking Palau's the first seeds to host the conference. Is there any initiative involving the Pacific seeds? So uh, are the Pacific small island, big ocean states, are they also, um, are they also involved? Oh, do you want to take that one? Because there's a lot. Yes, is the answer, but there's a lot going on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a lot going on. And on the 11th, there is a... Uh, uh, SIDS, uh, a global business forum um, um, hosted by the Republic of Palau uh, in partnership with the UN UNROLS and uh, the uh, agenda program is coming in soon. Uh, I can share that with everyone later on. Um, yes, I just ch checked the website. I was going to refer Mary to the website, but um, it, it's still being updated to it's not there at the moment. Um, yeah, so we'll, as you can tell, we're all looking forward to this. Um, Mary, did I answer your question? As a follow-up, okay, she says that's great. As a follow-up to her question, Bernadette in Palau is saying, um, is it possible at all to know any of the Pacific SIDS high-level delegates arriving? I know, um, just before we go into that, I know because I was just looking at the speakers and there are quite a few high level delegates. I see the deputy prime minister from Fiji will also be uh, speaking or well, he, he's part of um, the session. So I'm assuming he will be there. But um, yes, Bernadette is wanting to know if there are any other high level delegates arriving for the conference. As far as names, Bernadette, I'm sorry, uh, we can't confirm that right now. Uh, give, give us another week, we'll be able to report on this and, and share information with local media on the Global, global Business Forum, the attendees, and what's gonna be going on, as well as share it with our international partners. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? Yeah, I have, a, I have a question for O. O, I'm making a, a final run to Trader Joe's. I've had some requests to bring <laughs> uh, dark chocolate peanut butter cups. So if you have any final requests, you better get them in because I'm leaving soon. Give me an hour. What's that? Let me ask my daughter. Give me an okay. hour. Let me ask my daughter. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Justin. Okay, we don't have any other questions. I was, I see that Lisa Williams is online, but I just checked with her um, and she's actually on another call. I thought that she could, um, you know, talk to us a little bit about the support that PIS is going to provide in Palau uh, because Leilani had also mentioned that she will be there providing support um, to, to the Palau Media Council, but she's on another call at the moment. So we're gonna go into our final session and um, I'm going to get my colleague Imelda to talk a little bit about all the reminders, including the story grants, which we have uh, been talking about. You know, we have 12 story grants available. It's now open. The link has been in the chat. Don't forget to send in any of your story ideas uh, before April 30th, but we encourage you to please send them in earlier so, you know, you're not rushing through it. And, and if we have any questions, we, we can ask you as well before the closing date. Uh, Imelda, thank you. Uh, Vina Cardona, can you hear me? Okay. Um, thank you for uh, coming to this vir virtual workshop on ocean reporting. And I hope that you learned uh, from the three sessions that we had. So um, uh, keep on writing to strengthen your uh, reporting skills on ocean. And there are a lot of um, opportunities available for you 
including the STARI grants, the, uh, the Weight Institute and um, Journalism uh, Network offer. Uh, we encourage you to uh, apply and uh, pitch stories and the best, best pitches um, will receive funding and uh, as well as mentorship to help develop, develop your ideas into um, quality stories. So the deadline is on April 30 and I think uh, we've uh, shared the links uh, to you as well. And uh, yeah, please don't forget to visit our website, the Pacifica Environ News uh, that supports and aggregates um, uh, environmental related stories and data from the Pacific uh, region. And uh, of course, I'd like to thank everyone, uh, Pina and the Wake Foundation for supporting our activities for uh, Pacific Island journalists. And thank you, Donna and Eppoli for um, excellently moderating our sessions. And again, thank you for your time in participating to this uh, workshop on ocean reporting. Binaka. Thank you. Thank you, Melda, um, and thank you as well to all the speakers, Nanette, uh, Lelani, Shana, uh, especially to uh, Justin, who I think has already logged off because it's uh, it's nighttime for him. Um, so thank you for that, Justin, and and oh, and good luck with the workshop. I know you have two weeks to to prep and do everything. Um, before we close, I'm I'm just going to um, you know, uh, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have been able to do this without the Weight Institute. So Shana, if, if you would like to say anything before we close, um, we are right on time. Sorry, it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, I was not ready to say something clearly, but thank you all for being a part of this. It's been really, really amazing to see the turnout and the excitement from all of you. And I really hope that this is just the first step in getting to know all of you and that we work together in the future. So thank you for being here and being interested in covering the oceans and feel free to reach out with any questions. Okay, and with that, um, everyone, once again, uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you for those who've joined us for the three sessions. Uh, don't forget that you will have your uh, stipend, stipend for your Wi-Fi uh, cost uh, sent to your bank account, or um, we'll, we'll, we might have to Western Union for some of the countries. But to make things easier, um, if you have been with us for the three sessions from last week, um, including Monday, Thursday, and today, uh, can you send your, your details to Epeli? Um, and you should have his email or myself, so we can um, you know send, send you your stipend, which is $30 USD, and that's if you attended all three sessions. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're finishing early to make up for the, the extra time that we took with the last two sessions. Have a good afternoon or evening and, and see you online at the Our Oceans Conference in Palau. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.